the Optic roster saga only continues to brew as we've seen not only tweets but also stories and clips lead to what seems to be an ultimatum type decision. Pretty much, long story short, a few days ago we saw both Krem6 and Karma post tweets about becoming restricted free agents. Now this generated a lot of questions, right? Are they doing this to just see what's out there? Are they doing this to test the waters, if you will? Or are they really on the outside? And at this point, right, whenever I was seeing these tweets start to come out from Karma more specifically and later Krim, I thought, okay, the OG players, right, in terms of Skump, Dashy, and TJ Halley, they're going to Envy, right? At that point, it only made sense. They had made it clear that all five players, more specifically the entirety of the team, did not want to stay with Immortals. They did not want to be a part of the rumored LA Optic. They wanted to move forward onto a different team. The only solid option at the moment that we knew was somewhat solidified had to be Dallas or Envy. And when you got to Envy, the thing is, when you knocked on the door, there was someone who answered, which happened to be Hook, right? Someone had to be the on man out, as I believe personally, that Envy had no interest in wanting to get rid of Hook, at least somewhat easily. So I thought when we saw Karma tweet out, okay, that's a Karma for Hook type situation, they're on Dallas, that was a stipulation. And then whenever we saw Crim6 also tweet out, hey, I'm a restricted free agent, I thought, okay, well maybe they're bringing in someone like Gunless to Envy, maybe they're bringing in someone like Formal to Team Envious as well. That could be the three, or rather the two-player swap-off that, that might have been generated. That, that, at least at the time, was my belief. Later on, though, there was some more chatter on exactly what the details involving that decision were was specifically that there was an ultimatum involving the Immortals Gaming Club, a three-to-one vote and, and decision to not play, in fact, with Crim6. And uh, at this point, you're probably thinking, whoa, 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 Let's slow down. Did you just say Immortals? Did you just say Immortals? In fact, I did. As a matter of fact, Crim6 put out a very long-scaled post about his perspective on things and what he has been encountering over the last few days in terms of roster mania ahead of franchising. And through that post and others put together details, it seems like the following. The ultimatum to not play with Crim6 or Karma did not have Skump or Hex's blessing, if you will. It was voted by the other three players, one of which seems to be uh, formal uh, in that case. Skump, Dashy, and TJ are staying together and under the Immortals branding in LA. And like I said, are interested in playing with formal, might already have them on the team. That seems to be the case based on stuff that has been put together for the most part. Uh, it also looks as if Hex seems to be somewhat uh, in a stable place with Immortals right now could possibly be on that team if he was involved in the ultimatum or at least had the ability to sign off. According to Crim's post, it looks as if Skump and Hex will both be in LA with Immortals for next season. Now, is any of that stuff 100% definite? No, absolutely not. However, that's the way it seems to be going, at least for right now. Through this post, through what we've seen and the information that has been gathered, that looks to be the play. So, yet again, Karma has found himself on the outside. And for the first time, really, in Crim 6's career, he also looks to be on the outside and dropped from a team, which is absolutely crazy to me to look at these two players. Now, not only is this crazy that just a week ago, it seemed as if everything was fine. Not only is it crazy that just a week ago, the entire team looked to be moving together and on the same page, but it's crazy to me that the two players who are considered to be the GOATs, the greatest of all time discussion involves these two players as the best Call of Duty Esports, rather the best Call of Duty Esports players in history are both left out to dry. The two guys who are in contention for that title are left out. The three-time Call of Duty World Champion, right? The man who has been on every single dynasty. Impact instantly went for him. He was brought in by Complexity as the replacement. He was brought in by Optic as the only choice. There was no one else who was put in contention for that spot. The, he was the player who those brands brought in at the peak, at, at, a, at a very solid moment, to reach their full potential. Also, another person, the man who is a two-time world champion and holds 33 major championship wins. The, the most winningest player in Call of Duty Esports history across seven titles has played for exactly three organizations, one of which was a continuation of the same roster involving Cole and 
E.G. These are Mount Rushmore type players that we're dealing with. A lot of people out there just like to think, and, and maybe from kind of more of a, of a generalistic point of view, just think of the names, oh, you know, Crimsix and Karma, they're up there, right? They're, they're in the, the tier one names that you hear be involved in the community, but not a ton are realizing the emphasis on who these two guys are and the history that they have to show for themselves. The resume, the, rather, the resume is infinite. It keeps on going on, and now they are left to Rome. And you best believe that they're going to have a solid roster coming in to next season. Players without question will want to play with these guys. These are faces. These are brands in themselves, and they will bring players a plenty, right? I mean, in terms of wherever they want to sign, wherever they end up going, players will want to join alongside these guys. That's no real question. Not just because of their talent, but because of their brand, because of their expertise and their experience, most of which has been on top. But this will make, by the way, for those who haven't already thought about this, this will make for one of the best storylines in Call of Duty esports history, especially if Karma and Karim decide to play alongside each other. I mean, can you can you even believe that we have that possibility, that we have that potential, not only by having the idea that Crim6 and Karma would go up against their old team in terms of Scump, Dash, and TJ, but also because the most successful dynasty in Call of Duty esports history would be in the same lobby, but on different sides, right? If, if they do end up bringing in Formal to the uh, LA Optic spot, that'd be Scump and Formal on one side, and potentially Crim6 and Karma on the other, which is which is mental. It's actually crazy to even think that that's a possibility. And I've mentioned this, right? For those who have kind of followed myself, my talks about this uh, potential roster change, especially over the last few days, I've mentioned how this isn't uncommon, right? It isn't uncommon even in sports. Players all unite together in terms of the offseason. They say, hey, let's go play for this team. Let's all go together. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be milk and honey if we go over here. And then eventually someone gets left out to dry, right? The conversations begin to form. Someone gets tempted at the idea. Someone gets left out. Someone's not always involved in the conversations. There starts to be a group that begins to form and they think, you know what? How would we play without this player? How would we play without this guy on our team? Ooh, the idea of getting this particular player on our team, that would get us to the top. Because it's no surprise, especially whenever, and I was at Champs, right? I was in the very front row uh, at the, the final call of the Champs that we just witnessed. And watching Optic play for the final time versus 100 Thieves, you could feel the lack of confidence, not just in the crowd, but also in the gameplay itself, right? When they're facing off against multiple teams throughout the tournament, you know, granted they had a good resurgence, but they just by far weren't the better team. And there have been times in the past where it's looked upon like, hey, they should have won the title, right? When we go back to previous world championships, it was a matter of they should have won the title, they had the talent to do so, they could have done it. But here it was strictly a matter of getting outclassed. And that starts to set some doubts in players' mind, right? And the doubt, rather, in the mind of Scump and Dashy and TJ, possibly, and I'm, I'm just speculating, obviously, maybe the doubt started to set in and say, you know what? Maybe this team doesn't have the ability to be the best in the world. Maybe this team, with these players on our roster, we don't have the potential to take down 100 Thieves-like lineups. Now, will those teams exist for franchising? I mean, not necessarily those exact players, but we could see teams be at the same level or at the same skill set, kind of be that same common denominator for the future, where Optic, if they did stick together, will have to go up against those same teams if they wanted to be alongside each other again, and they may encounter the same issue, the issues. They may encounter the same problems over and over again. And so for me, kind of going back to my original point, it happens in sports, it happens even in esports as well. It is not uncommon, but it is still somewhat surprising that these two guys in particular were left out to dry. Krem6 and Karma were left in the dark. Karma even said on stream, and quote, I'm not sure what's going on, but people are doing stuff. People, multiple, are doing stuff. And that exact quote is a sign that this man has no clue what's happening. People are doing stuff. And like I said, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things that you can kind of generate from that. And, and pros know this, right? Odds are, if you are in the dark in terms of COVID esports, in terms of the offseason, in terms of roster changes, if you are in the dark, odds are it was intended to be that way. It's not a surprise that 
someone isn't responding to your text. It's not a surprise that someone isn't responding to my DMs, my messages, my phone calls. There is a good chance they aren't responding for a reason, which is possibly what we saw there. And don't get me wrong, right? Karma and Crim6 did not have the best year of their career. That's not a surprise. They would even say that. That is very, very evident. But the best player, and as everyone knows, on Optic at Black Ops 4, was, was far and away dashy. But after all the talk, right, after all the talk of staying together, the issues that they've gone through in terms of the, the problems with Infinite, the ability to capture a championship together back in Infinite Warfare, I mean, all the storylines that have been developing for so long, and the fact that the Core 3, now is the time, after saying we're sticking together, after saying, hey, we're going forward as a roster together in the offseason, and now it leads to this. It's crazy. It really is. Franchising roster mania just took a turn, and it made one of the most interesting turns in storylines in Call of Duty esports history. And we've learned in a very short period of time, pretty much a week, right, that Scump, Dashy, TJ, and maybe Formal will be roaming together, and it seems to be in L.A., under Immortals, and uh, it also seems that Hex may be moving forward with Immortals in LA as well, but Crim6 and Karma, right, two guys who are considered to be Call of Duty GOATs, who are the only two players in most people's mind who are in contention for that title, to be considered the greatest, are now on the outside and looking for a new home.